Good morning, everyone. This is Jason with the National Weather Service with our overnight update here on this uh, potential severe weather coming to our area. Uh, looks like we do have another uh, chance here, a uh, really good chance, as a matter of fact, of some additional tornadoes and damaging winds, especially across the central Georgia portion, but uh, maybe all the way up to I-20 as well. So just going to quickly detail some of this. We'll have another briefing uh, later on today, uh, probably of this variety as well. Uh, just depending on how much time we have before the uh, the real thunderstorms hit. So, uh, looking at uh, the map right now, we can uh, if we look back over here over portions of Mississippi, we can see that we already have thunderstorms developing, and as a matter of fact, we already have some warnings going out as well. Uh, this activity is going to be quickly advancing to the east during the day, and so. Uh, initially, though, we're just going to see some showers developing over our area uh, later this morning. So it'll be later on before this, these thunderstorms actually make it to the area. So we're going to be watching for that uh, to see um, uh, how this stuff spreads uh, during the course of today. So let's take you through what's going on right now. Uh, this is a far cry from the other day when we had severe weather. Um, if you remember the dew points, uh, were quite high to start the day and so we were already in the 50s and even some 60s. Uh, for today though it, uh, it's a different story. We have dew points that are not really all that conducive uh, to severe weather right now in the 30s and 40s mainly. Uh, we have some uh, 50s down in uh, central Georgia however so uh, it looks like uh, the uh, higher dew points will be streaming uh, northward during the day so uh, just because it's not conducive right now doesn't mean it's not going to be conducive later. So things are going to be tra changing rapidly as we go through the day. And the Storm Prediction Center, this is uh, going to be different than what you saw uh, probably when you went to bed last night. Uh, the, If you remember, I'll just highlight this area again for you. The moderate risk uh, last night cut off somewhere around here last night, but now it's been extended quite a bit uh, to the east now to include much of central Georgia, uh, the Columbus, Macon region uh, for sure, all the way down to our Tombs and Wheeler counties there. All of those areas uh, are now included in the moderate risk. Uh, we do have the enhanced risk, roughly goes up to about I-20 uh, over the Atlanta metro there. Uh, we can expect uh, damaging winds for this portion. I uh, can't rule out a tornado up here either, but most of the tornadoes will be uh, within this uh, moderate risk category uh, for today. So we're going to be watching for that as well. So if we break down that moderate risk a little bit, uh, we also have the uh, wind probability graphic here. And so that's been extended further east as well. And so uh, now showing a 45% chance of severe wind, which is really high uh, for this area. And then we have the hatched, which is showing the significant severe wind. Uh, so we're looking at uh, the 70 mile per hour uh, possibility for the winds uh, through this area. So uh, tornadoes will be a threat, of course, which I'm going to detail in here in a second, but we can't forget about the wind threat as well. So uh, there will be some strong winds. And again, if we go up here, we got 30% all the way up to near the I-20 corridor there on the west side and certainly encompasses the I-20 corridor on the east side there. Uh, so it looks like the, the wind threat will certainly be present uh, all the way up to the uh, Atlanta metro uh, for this evening primarily as we get into the first part of the overnight as well. Here's that tornado risk I was talking about, 10% uh, chance. Uh, they highlight generally the whole area. It does get up uh, maybe to the southern metro there in Coweta, Fayette counties uh, as well, but uh, mostly encompassing that Columbus to Macon corridor again, uh, looking like a good chance of seeing a tornado. And then we have the hatched area. And so what the hatched area means uh, from last week, I'm sure you remember, uh, means that we could have a significant tornado. And so those would be those stronger tornadoes EF2, EF3 uh, possibility, uh, long track tornadoes, so not just the ones that are brief, but the ones that stay on the ground for quite, quite a while. Uh, if you remember last week, we had some in Texas that hop, skipped, and jumped, but it was the same circulation that moved all the way up. So uh, could see something develop over Mississippi, Alabama, certainly today, and we'll watch it uh, as it evolves. But one of those long track tornadoes could certainly move into this area, so we're going to be watching that closely. 
Then we have the hail probability, uh, like the last event, not quite as high for our area, mainly out to the west, and especially for the significant severe hail staying out to the west. So still need to watch out, uh, again, over the central Georgia corridor to see if this spreads any further east, but primarily going to remain out west for this one. So we're going to take a look at uh, some of the model output here of how this may evolve. Again, this is going to be a really close call because we've got the dry air in place, and so it's just a matter of how far north that dry air uh, retreats and we get some of that moist air moving into the area uh, as to how far north our severe threat will get. So as we get into the morning hours, you can see we already start to see showers spreading over. There will be some thunder in this, but not expecting any severe storms uh, for this morning out of this activity. Uh, just going to be too dry with those uh, dew points uh, initially. And then as we go through, this is going to be mid morning, so around 11 a.m., mid to late morning there, uh, spreading over North Georgia. Could start to see some thunderstorms developing by this time, uh, more significant thunderstorms, I should say, over the Alabama portion and starting to move into our southwest Georgia zones. And then by 18Z, uh, still watching this. And then if I turn your attention, uh, out to the west as we get over Louisiana and Mississippi. Here comes the real activity that we're expecting to cause some trouble uh, later on in the evening. So let's get into the afternoon hours. So this is uh, around uh, 4 p.m. now. So starting to get this activity uh, in Alabama, Mississippi really starting to get going uh, as it moves east. And you can see here we go as we move into the evening hours. So right around midnight, 1 a.m. there, uh, this activity starting to translate across. Anywhere you see this area here that's hatched or in this, uh, in this little circle polygon here, shaded area, I guess I should say, any of those areas, um, we could be looking at some tornado formation in there, and we're gonna be looking for damaging winds further north than that as well. So uh, certainly uh, gonna be uh, highlighting this area over and over again as we get into Stewart up to Columbus over to Macon and then back down to Tombs and Wheeler any of these down to Crisp any of these will be prime for any uh, tornado formation. Now I do want to show you some of the other models at this same time so uh, this is one of the other short-term models and it's a little bit uh, displaced further south and so this would uh, result in a severe threat that's not quite as far north as the some of the other models so that's what we're going to be watching to see how much of a recovery we have, and that's what uh, the later briefing will detail, uh, will be uh, how much of that moist air has gotten north to allow for uh, the severe storms to move north. So, um, and then taking another look at here, some other models still showing that same general area. This one's perhaps further north. So right now, let's just follow this particular model as it goes through. And you can see that by the time we get to uh, around 2 and 3 a.m., it's starting to move out of the area, but we still have this little piece back here. And so we're going to be watching it as well as it comes across. Mainly going to be showers with it, but not out of the question to produce a little bit of thunder with it as well. And then it'll finally be moving out late Monday night, late Sunday night into Monday morning. So um, the main thing to remember here is that we have an extensive period of showers beginning maybe a little bit of a break but then some more thunderstorms developing during the afternoon and then the main event coming during the uh, evening hours so another multi-round event uh, you can imagine this is going to produce quite a bit of rainfall um, as well so not only the tornadoes and the damaging wind but also a rainfall threat too so we're going to be watching that let me show you first though this uh, energy this tornado energy parameter we showed you last week you can see just how close a call it's going to be. So we're always looking for those blues and greens, which do shoot up into Stewart County by the time we get into the early afternoon hours. And then as we get into the late afternoon, it's trying its best to get north, but it can't quite do it, uh, except for those handful of counties in the southwest. And then as we move into the evening hours, we get a little bit of a surge there, right there at the end, as we get into the late evening and overnight hours. Um, so that energy necessary for tornadoes, you can see how it surges. It's going to be mainly out west over Mississippi and Alabama, but boy, it's going to be a really close call for us. I would say uh, for those first uh, cluster of counties, two to three deep across our area. So we would be looking at 
uh, Stewart, Chattahoochee, uh, certainly Muscogee in that Columbus area, any of those over to Macon. We're really going to be watching these closely because that energy is right there uh, for the taking for tornado formation. So we'll be watching that closely. And then again, the rainfall. Uh, don't sleep on the rainfall on this one. This one's going to be a significant event for central Georgia. And so keep up in those rainfall totals. Now we're up to uh, four and five inches, especially for that Columbus area with isolated higher amounts. So anytime we get that in a short period of time, especially in these waves like this, uh, we could see uh, some flash flooding across the area and that's hence the flash flood watch that we have in effect. And then also the moderate risk of excessive rainfall. So uh, that kind of highlights that same area there uh, that's uh, showing this anywhere from three, four, five inches of rain across this area. Lighter amounts up here, but remember we've had rain uh, from this last system uh, really affected this area as well. So it won't take much to produce flash flooding up here, which is why the flash flood watches in effect there. So with that, uh, we'll do another briefing later today, hopefully, and uh, hopefully you guys stay safe today, and uh, we'll talk to you later.